Chapter 4 The Death of the Curate On the sixth day of our imprisonment, I caught the curate drinking in the scullery. I snatched in the darkness. My fingers caught a bottle of burgundy. For a few moments there was a tussle. The bottle struck the floor and broke. I desisted and rose. We stood panting and threatening each other. In the end, I planted myself between him and the food. I divided it into rations to last us ten days. I would not let him eat any more that day. All day and all night we sat face to face. I weary but resolute and he weeping and complaining of his hunger. For two vast days we struggled in undertones and wrestling contests. There were times when I beat and kicked him madly, times when I cajoled and persuaded him. Once I tried to bribe him with the last bottle of Burgundy, but neither force nor kindness availed. He was indeed beyond reason. He would neither desist from his attacks on the food, nor from his noisy babbling to himself. Slowly, I began to realise that my sole companion in this close and sickly darkness was a man insane. On the eighth day, he began to talk aloud instead of whispering, and nothing I could do would moderate his speech. We have sinned, O God, he said over and over again. We have fallen short. Then he would suddenly revert to the matter of the food I withheld from him, praying, begging, weeping, at last threatening. He began to raise his voice. I prayed him not to. He threatened he would shout and bring the Martians upon us. For a time that scared me, but any concession would have shortened our chance of escape beyond estimating. I defied him. He talked with his voice rising slowly through the greater part of the eighth and ninth days. Then he slept a while and began again so loudly that I must needs make him desist. Be still, I implored. He rose to his knees. I have been still too long, he said in a tone that must have reached the pit. And now I must bear my witness. Shut up, I said, rising to my feet, and in a terror lest the Martian should hear us. For God's sake! Nay, shouted the curate at the top of his voice, standing likewise and extending his arms. Speak! The word of the Lord is upon me. In three strides, he was at the door leading into the kitchen. I put out my hand and felt the meat chopper hanging to the wall. In a flash, I was after him. I was fierce with fear. Before he was halfway across the kitchen, I had overtaken him. With one last touch of humanity, I turned the blade back and struck him with the butt. He went headlong forward and lay stretched on the ground. I stumbled over him and stood panting. He lay still. Suddenly I heard a noise without. I looked up and saw a handling machine. I stood petrified, staring. I saw the face, as we may call it, and the large dark eyes of a Martian, peering. Then a long metallic snake of tentacle came feeling slowly through the hole. I turned, stumbled over the curate and stopped at the scullery door. The tentacle was in the room, twisting and turning with queer sudden movements. With a faint hoarse cry, I forced myself across the scullery. I trembled violently. I could scarcely stand upright. I opened the door of the coal cellar and stood there in the darkness. 
staring at the faintly lit doorway into the kitchen. Had the Martian seen me? What was it doing now? Something was moving very quietly. It made a faint, metallic ringing sound, like the movements of keys on a ring. Every now and then, it tapped against the wall. Then a heavy body, I knew too well what, was dragged across the floor of the kitchen towards the opening. Irresistibly attracted, I crept to the door and peeped into the kitchen. Through the triangle of bright sunlight, I saw the Martian in its machine, scrutinising the curate's head. I crept back to the coal cellar and shut the door. As noiselessly as possible in the darkness, I began to cover myself up with firewood and coal. The faint metallic jingle returned. It passed, scraping faintly across the cellar door. I heard it fumbling at the latch. It had found the door. The Martians understood doors. The door opened. In the darkness, I could just see the thing, like an elephant's trunk, waving towards me. It was like a black worm swaying its blind head to and fro. It touched the heel of my boot. I was on the verge of screaming. I bit my hand. Then, with an abrupt click, it gripped something. I thought it had me. But then, it seemed to go out of the cellar again. I whispered passionate prayers for safety. Then I heard the slow deliberate sound creeping towards me again. Slowly, slowly, it drew near, scratching against the walls and tapping the furniture. Then it rapped smartly against the cellar door and closed it. I heard it go into the pantry. The biscuit tins rattled and a bottle smashed. Then came a heavy bump against the cellar door then silence that passed into an infinity of suspense. Had it gone? I lay all the tenth day in the close darkness, buried among coals and firewood, not daring even to crawl out for the drink for which I craved. It was the eleventh day before I ventured out.